yes, I believe the government, or at least an element of the government, you know, some arm of the Ministry of Defence, somehow there is an involvement. I mean, even back in the um, late 1980s, early 1990s, there's acknowledged and official records showing elements of government investigation in this subject. There were questions asked in the Houses of Parliament. Interestingly, if you look at media reports from the 1980s in the BBC and local television in southern England, you'll find really interesting coverage, even from mainstream media. They had, you know, meteorologists and scientists out in the field saying, we don't understand what's happening here we need to really research this and as soon as the whole hoax thing got into the international media around about 1991-92 all of a sudden the media dealt with it in a completely different way as if at some point in the late 1980s it was beginning to get too big you know a lot of people were getting very interested a lot of people were beginning to take the subject and the whole phenomenon quite seriously and I believe at some level, somewhere, upstairs, that began to worry somebody, you know. I mean, wherever the circles are coming from, they have this fairly deep, profound effect on people, which causes people to ask questions and to reevaluate society, how we live as human beings, you know. It, it promotes the asking of the very big questions about who we really are, what we're doing here, you know, and the, the big questions that, you know, human beings should be searching for and looking for answers. Then the crop circles seem to act like a catalyst to, um, to promote these, these different new ways of thinking in people. So the whole, all of a sudden, the whole hoaxing thing is dragged out of nowhere. Two old men claim to make all the circles from the 1970s, and that story is shoved around the world, and ever since, you know, that's the, the standard default answer for any mainstream media. And it, it kind of coincides with the, um, the, uh, the, the large scale, the beginning of the large-scale hoaxing campaign, really, in the early 1990s, which I, I do personally believe that there is some kind of direction behind this, as I was saying earlier, in a way, if you can't hide it, confuse it, and the best way to confuse it is to bring it, bring in a load of fluffy researchers, say all of it's completely amazing and it's all a gift from God, and, it, and wrap it up in a kind of a new age thing <clears throat> then the media can laugh it off you know and it will keep it will keep the interest very low which i think is kind of necessary because <clears throat> obviously the system that runs the world really doesn't want people thinking for themselves they want us to go shopping and be medicated and watch television and get in debt you know this is um <clears throat> for the system that runs the world I, this is the, the nature of being human and the purpose of being human is to be slaves to a system the crop circles wake people up from that kind of slavery in a sense and start <clears throat> and questions are asked about is this really how things should be so there's a good reason i think for some agency to keep interest as low as possible and th th there's direct observed experiences where it seems that some branch of our ministry of defense black operations whatever are using um technology to surveil and keep track on this subject you know using helicopters black um military style apache type helicopters over the crop circles quite often in daylight you know we'll, we'll see these aircraft you know flying from a particular direction to a crop circle they'll spend maybe 15 20 minutes over a crop circle in broad daylight do whatever they're doing and then fly away in the direction that they came as if that was the mission to go to that crop circle do whatever they do and then fly away there's obviously there's a lot of military training around here we're in <clears throat> one of the in the middle of one of the most militarized zones in europe here so most of what people see i believe in terms of military helicopters and crop circles is relatively mundane curious pilots and standard training but there's an element of the military using black unmarked helicopters that very very much pay attention to the crop circles i don't know what exactly they're doing but i've seen enough of this kind of thing to know to my own satisfaction that they're involved they're monitoring they're watching i've seen these types of helicopters chasing orbs of light around fields 
um, my partner just several years ago, she, you know, she stopped her car on the side of a field and saw one of these helicopters hovering about 50 feet over a crop circle, holding down a large orb of light that was floating around above the crop circle and the helicopter was like, tracking it, you know, trying to hold it down to the ground and it's an orb of light about two meters in diameter. You know, this is my partner. I've been with her for seven years. You know, she calls, she actually phones me from the field. You know, saying, you know, you're not going to believe what I'm seeing here. You know, and she's describing what she's seeing, and it's completely amazing. And I cannot get away from the fact that this is a British government military helicopter with no markings on, closely interacting with a crop circle, <clears throat> and some kind of what appears to be some kind of paranormal phenomena between the crop circle and the helicopter, that one event alone tells me that there's an involvement and something going on here with the military. I don't know what it is for sure, but who knows, you know, I've slept in hundreds of circles over the years. I've been woken up at six or seven o'clock in the morning by black helicopters hovering 50 feet over my head, you know, kind of embarrassing in a way, just woke up and done my hair yet, <laughs> you know. Yeah, they're involved for sure.